We've tested his ears in multiple scenarios. Can he tell what guitars are? Can he tell what pickups are? Can he tell what pedals are? But <laughs> can he smell what? Uh, what we've not done yet is seen whether or not Rob knows his amps. <clears throat> I'm nervous. Um, so here's the setup. We've got a blindfolded Rob Chapman. Hello. A very cool looking Chris Robertson signature Chapman guitar. Cha-ching. A Soldano 2x12, uh, which is a vintage 30 loaded 2x12 cabinet. So I get it, not necessarily the, 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 the uh, ideal choice of speaker for every single amp we've got here, but it's pretty universally known and so uh, we like the sound of this cab. We have an aux, so we are using the attenuator in here just to take the edge off because we're going to gun some of these amplifiers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight fantastic tube amplifiers here. We've got an amp from Orange, Soldano, EVH. We've got three Marshalls going through the, the decades from JTM to Plexi to, to uh, JCM 800. We've got a Fender Deluxe in a head. You don't see those very often. And we've got an AC30, uh, which actually is pretty cool because I, if I use the, it's a new AC30. So if I use the external speaker output on here, it cuts out the speakers inside. So it's going to work like a head. We're not going to tell Rob what order we're going to plug them in in. We're going to gun them, so even on like the Fender and stuff, we're just going gunned, right? And Rob, he's got no pedals. I'm raw dogging life, he's, man. He's just a guitar, dogging. a cable, and a very loud amplifier. And he's just got to guess which is which, and we can talk about it. And if you would like to play along, you can do exactly the same thing. You just have to obscure your eyes. Go put your own blindfold on. Hey, you know, mum's got one in her drawer, right? <laughs> um, and uh, Let's do this. Now, the first amp we're going to try, I need to just... Uh, What's the first amp you're going to try, Luke? I don't know. I'm just going to choose one at random. I think I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to make a bit of a noise like I'm ruffling about to get an amp out of the pile. And we're going to just grab something. Speaker came I'm all good. We are ready to rock. Everything is gunned except for the volume, which I will gradually ease in. Um, we're using the aux on setting number four, which is it's kind of one step down from maximum. So we're still pretty loud in here. Uh, are you ready, Mr. Rob, to tell me what you think this is? Okay, sir. Here we go. Oh my God. If that's not a JCM 800, I am a blind, middle-aged, slightly overweight guy. I've got to write that down. It's quote of the century. Um, hang on. I've just put, if that's not a blind, middle-aged guy, but that's <laughs> not actually what you said, is it? If that's not a JCM 800, uh, then I'm, I'm a blind, a... overweight, slightly, I don't know, something. That's a JCM 800. I tell you what, I'm not going to say what it is. But what I love <clears throat> is the fact that we're hearing these amplifiers cranked, which is kind of the point. I almost feel I could go another notch on here. Do it, do it, do it, do it. You have, for those do of you it. that aren't familiar with this, obviously, I can't tell you about this amplifier without giving away. But okay, we'll do that at the end. Um, right, I'm just going to go another notch just because. <laughs> Even the wrong notes sound yeah. fine, Rob. Okay, Sorry, man. <laughs> man alive, it's proper it, tone. It feels like I'm getting ready to play a gig. Anyway, so you think that's a JCM that's 800, do you? What about you at home? Comment now, if you're, obviously you have to be playing along. All right, well look, we'll find out at the end of this. Uh, is Can there I anything ask a else? question, please, yes. sir? Am I allowed to ask you to change the EQ on the amps? 
just assume everything is gunned. So by all means, if you'd rather I did something else. Yeah, let's get you, I'll do whatever you like, Rob, within reason. Okay. <laughs> what would you like me to do? No, no, I just, I know that's an 800, but I just like, you, so you've got, you just rolled, have you? Everything. It, it, I'm not, I can't really tell you what the knobs are because it'll give it away. But yeah, I thought you were just going to gun the volume, not everything. No, every single knob is on its maximum setting. Oh, I definitely wouldn't gun the treble. All right. On an 800. Uh, but, but put the treble halfway. Well, assuming it has a treble control, <laughs> let's just see what happens. Uh, so now we might or might not have a treble control. <laughs> That's an 800. Sounds amazing. We'll find Fiddle out at the end, right? We'll find out. Okay, next. Uh, okay, I will plug something else in. Back in a mo. Right, Mr. Rob. Back we, in the room. Yes, indeed. We have uh, amp number two. Um, and again, we are just going to crank the bajahibas <laughs> with everything on maximum. I don't know if this is a good idea. Who knows? Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. It's so funny. Guessing that the uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, should we just take that as the <clears throat> answer? It's a Vox. I mean, what a rock and roll good sound that was, whatever it may be. It's got that brittle uh, chime. Brittle chime. Sounds like something you buy in B Bristol from a, from a grocer's. You got any brittle chime? <laughs> Might be run out of that today. What were the other sort of you know characteristics of that amplifier that made you think it was Vox -y. unbelievably bright now but you're gunning everything aren't you i am yeah i mean yeah. do you want to do the same where we take yeah. the tone down ba back off the treble you know that with the treble control that isn't there. uh Ooh. yeah i mean look go for it <laughs> I just want to do the 10 seconds of on maximum. Uh, here we go. Okay. That's very loud. It's got a much saggier bottom than the first one, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but we like a fat bottoms, girls. <laughs> they make <laughs> the rugged world one, go I? round. Um, all right, so we're saying that's an AC30. Yeah. What does everybody think at home? Uh, let's try something else. Okay, here we go uh, with number three. I don't know whether this is... 
would be a whether this is the type of amplifier that you would dime perhaps i'm giving too much away but <laughs> feel free to tell me to turn something down but i'm scared oh my god oh my god <laughs> dude <laughs> So, right, I'm going to say, okay, so it's not as loud as I was frightened it was going to be, but clearly we're probably overloading the sort of the gain stage of this amplifier yeah. in a way that's not necessarily going to get the best out of it. G give it two so, thirds of the amp. So I'm going to, I'm going to basically go back to sort of like a... Two thirds of the amp. Yeah, we can gun the volume, but I think with things like gain and stuff like that, we'll back it down a little bit. So here we go. So this is unreal. Tay signalling to me. You want to go one more, do you? Yeah, yeah I thought so. We're going one more on the ox. Oh Here we go. God. Maximum. <laughs> Apologise to our neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, shoot, that's true. Describe the tone to me, and then see if you can put a brand to it. <clears throat> well, so the, the the problem is that I'm between two amplifiers, and one of them I don't know very well, and the other one I have an amp that is similar but it's different. So it's warm and creamy. It could either be the JTM, um, which I've never heard loud before and an amp loud is completely different to an amp <laughs> at bedroom demonstration volume so it's either the jtm from marshall or i guess it could be the orange um of which i have the uh, the 50 watt um or 50 ham wired which is incredible <sighs> But I've never had one that. With just the one massive knob on the front. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, it's a great. It's but just, uh, yeah, it's great. Oh amp. shoot, I dropped my pick. But I've no, I've never had that louder than like you know on the low setting and then like halfway out. You haven't this lived. Is unreal. You haven't lived. Well, I've lived. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> so it's either the JTM or it's the Orange. Okay. And I don't know the JTM well enough, and I've never played an OR thirty. Is it an OR thirty? I can't tell you. You I can't don't know. tell me. Right. Um, let's um. Let's leave it with those because obviously at some point you're going to try another amplifier that could be the JTM right. or the OR30 and then you might go, oh yeah, that might help me with my decision well, now. Well, that's why I drop tuned it because the orange stuff, I'm, I'm more familiar with the grungy kind of crunchy for, tone. For me, it, it sort of, it was tighter and gainier than the second amplifier. Yeah, for sure. Which you thought was an AC30. Yeah. But it wasn't as tight or gainy as the first amplifier. What are you doing? Where's the table gone? <laughs> you've, mild, you've turned virtually backwards. Turn uh, around. Uh, keep I? going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's like a go, fun go, go. fair, isn't it? No, keep going, keep going. <laughs> and arm out now. There you are. 
They're your glasses, they won't help. There's a pick here somewhere. Uh, I'll, I'll get the pick. Hang on. Oh, I'll okay, get it. Okay. Where did it go? Just there. Yeah. He's <laughs> like walking around like in a pond. Like... Thanks, man. <laughs> okay, um, right. Let's try another amplifier and see where we're going. Amp number four is coming up. Do you know what I have realised in this demonstration so far, Rob? What is have if you, you play an amp loud enough, you don't miss the fact there's no reverb. I haven't at one point gone, oh, if only the sound had some reverb on it. I think that just goes to show, doesn't it, that just fat power and everything. Fat you can, power? You can go drive. I need a t-shirt that says fat, fat power. Fat power works yeah. dry. That's well, a bad if you, if you message. play loud enough, your ears <laughs> ring for you, that's the reverb. Right, are you ready? Uh, I really God. don't know if this is a good idea to gun this, but we're doing it anyway. Oh my God! <laughs> I think we're going to make a similar observation to the last amp, which is that actually maybe gunning some of these higher gain amplifiers across the whole EQ spectrum isn't necessarily a great let, idea. Yeah, just, you so know, we're going sort of ordinary semi gunned. Okay. <laughs> Crikey O'Reilly. Uh, okay, just, I've got, I'm gunning the master volume. Everything else I've dialed back, so to sort of around about one o'clock do it, do it, do it. Are you happy with, can, I, can, do you, would you like me to change anything? Less like, gain. Yeah, There's I was gonna say, so is it just much too much, gain. isn't it? Right, we're going back to like 11 o'clock on the gain. Uh, let's see, here we go, maximum. <laughs> Describe it to me. I think it helps. No, it can only be the Soldano. There, there is nothing else with that gain structure in, in, in the pile of amps. Obviously, I know what amps we have. Yeah. So it can only be the Soldano. That, that kind of gain isn't in an 800. That kind of gain isn't in an orange. You don't think it might be in the 5150? Well, now you say that, I do. Um, I mean, um, like you say, it's not going to be in the Fender. No, but that's the, for but sure. The, but. You know, funnily enough, you know what? I've never really played a Soldano, but I've used Soldano patches on everything I program. Mm -hmm. So nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fifty fifty one fifty is thicker and and um, lower. If it was a Soldano, yeah. Um, and actually, in all fairness, we're into an amp here where most of these knobs are pretty much on all the other amps anyway but give me the eq setting that you and the gain setting that you go for and i, I would just... back off the treble i would i would uh, the gain is good now i would uh, scoop just a touch of that mid okay and i would put in a little bit more bass okay if there's a presence control yeah i would back it off ever so slightly okay um i still want to i mean it's so loud but i still want to hear it full throttle because we've heard everything else <laughs> Can I just say as well, I think you, you've you've definitely made some good EQ suggestions there. That is a good sound. It's still very fat, isn't it? it might just be because of the volume we're running. I'm out of tune. I'm out of tune. Okay. Ready? Okay. Hit yeah. Life. 
That sounds really, really good. Do you know good. what? I'm going to put a petition together actually to ban attenuators now because it's like when you have an amp that sounds this good, like making it not sound that good should be illegal. I agree with you. I'm, sticking, need... with, I'm sticking with Soldano. I think it's a Soldano. All right. Well, what can I say? I tried to help, but you know. Do <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Amp number five. Rob said something deeply profound whilst we were setting this latest amplifier up. He said... Maybe volume's just the magic ingredient. I mean, maybe it is. I think everything sounds a bit better when it's louder. A bit? Know? Yeah. I think it's where the excitement and the energy, especially if you like rock and roll and rock and all that kind of stuff, it's like, it's, 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 volume is such a key part of it. Um, and I sort of feel like as modern lives have gone on and we've started using plugins and little desktop and worrying that we live in a flat and we can't make any noise anywhere and <sighs> venues tell you you've got to turn down. It's like, there'll never be another Led Zeppelin all the time we're just saying, come on, everybody. Do you think, <laughs> Let's do you all think, go deaf together. Do you think Jimmy played loud? <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. No, Jimmy. Jimmy Led Page. Zeppelin. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine he probably did. Yeah, he probably did. Uh, what, was anyway. he, what was he, AC's? I don't know, all sorts, suit pros and marshals and all sorts, wasn't yeah. it? But anyway. Boom! Jesus Christ. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay. Ready? <laughs> I don't, I really like it. I don't like the tone. It's okay. interesting. Because uh, I, I didn't think there would be one here that I didn't really like the tone of. Um, Let me go louder. That will always help. Oh, is that what we get? Is that what we get? <laughs> oh, God, that's, oh. Really? So, bridge, play, bridge pick up heavy riffy so stuff. It's so hurting my ears. <laughs> I'm surprised. I thought you were getting some good sounds with it just full it, board it, gunned riffy stuff it, rather it, than the finger picked stuff. No, I, I really didn't like the tone. It's, it's not your bag. Very glassy that, that hurt my ears in, 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 it, like I was being attacked uh, <laughs> by something. I don't like it. Um, I'm just going to say it's either... It's something I'm not particularly familiar with, so it's probably the Fender. Because I, I, I've never played through a Fender like that before. I mean, certainly, if it was the Fender, you certainly wouldn't associate it with that much gain as a sort of a classic no. uh, Fender tone, but maybe it wasn't the Fender. Anyway, let's move on to the next amp. We are on amp number six of uh, eight, right? Yeah, so we're nearly there. Let's just wind this mother up.
it's not handling that volume uh, very well. I think it's because it needs to go louder on one louder on the ox. Okay. Let's try again. <laughs> for a rhythm crunchy tone would you like uh, me to back any, anything off like again we've dined everything so uh it's not a tight it's not a tight gain sound i'm sort no, of inclined no, to take it's, some bass out it's not it's unpleasant though interesting there is you you just need to play to the amp so when you find I started playing like I was playing yeah. live. So I, the I, second, I imagined I was playing a gig yeah. and I started playing live. Yeah. I think even just the riff choice was a was a sort of a, it it suited the amp more. Well that's the kind of tone I used when I recorded that track for Clockwork Wolf. It's okay. Part, the track's called Part of the Plan, uh, now known as Rob Chapman. I think that might be the JTM. Oh, there was a JTM, open. wasn't there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so what do you like about it? Because that was, again, one of the sort of the lower gain uh, sounding amplifiers, certainly but, lower but, but preamp it's, gain. It's warm and it's not too glassy and brittle and, and bright. I don't like sounds that are really in your face brittle. That's got a warm, mm. uh, chewy crunchiness to it. And it reminded me of the Selma combo that I used full volume for that. Uh, riff. Interesting. Okay, well, you've made your choice. Let's just give us an A chord. Oh, well, that we sounds. We stay great. there, yeah. The team here have made an executive decision. Uh, for those watching, this is where we're going uh, with this amplifier, and I am. A little bit like the one of the ones before, not entirely sure that this amp was designed to be dimed, but hey, let's find out! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> We, ha we definitely will have hearing loss fr from this, but I'm it's almost <laughs> worth it. Um, it handles the bass end so well. Yeah, that's a 5150. <laughs> that's what that is, that's a 5150. 
So I'm sweating. <laughs> it's so loud. It's, my body is in, body make you sweat? My, my DNA has been reconfigured. <laughs> but that's a 5150, 110%. I don't. I can't go back in. I don't know what else to say. No, that's it was fine. Great sounding we, amplifier. We, we very move modern. On. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> or it's the Fender, you know. I know. It could be the Fender. Yeah, one, absolutely. One of the two. Yeah, absolutely. Do you remember? You know what we should have had for this? Imagine if we'd had that old Fender machete. You'd have liked oh, that. Oh, that was you? great. It's a great amp. Anyway. Oh yeah. Crikey. Uh, next. Number eight. What have we got? How's everybody at home doing? <laughs> okay. They haven't got hearing loss. <laughs> exactly. Are you ready for the final time? Cranking the shit out of this amplifier. Oh my God. I love that. It what, whatever that is. It does, is. it's not That's as loud great. as it again. <laughs> I don't know what well, it I mean, is. There's only one amp left that you haven't mentioned oh, yet. Okay. So, but I was in between with the JTM and the, the Fender. True. So well, does this that does this have to be a Plexi then? Well, that's the uh, that's the only amplifier that you haven't mentioned yet. So, I mean, obviously, purely based by deduction, it's your only choice left. But of course, if you think it's something else, it just means you've got something else wrong. So, what do you think it is? I mean, it sounds plexi-ish, but then to be honest, the JTM could sound plexi-ish and so could the Fender. <laughs> I thought that had more gain than the one that you thought was the JTM. Right. But the plexi would have more gain. Are you diming it? Is the plexi being dimed? Everything's been, yeah. The, no, I the, mean, are you jumping the... the yes, yes, yes. Yep. Then I reckon that's the plexi. Okay. Just to be, uh, you know, uh, finickety here, pedantic, whatever you want to call it, dimed is referring to the American coin, a dime being 10 cents, meaning everything's on 10. Yeah. And jumped is when you're jumping the two channels. So yeah. diming is not this bit, diming is this That sounds bit. more like- But a, I've dimed and jumped. That sounds more like a jumped plexi to me than anything else I've played. Well- But it sounds really good too. So before we reveal what was what, did you have a favorite out of them all? Or is it horses for uh, horses? You know what? The 5150 was <laughs> phenomenal. And it was all, I don't know why I didn't use that. Well, I do. When I was playing in Dorje, victory was the thing. Well, that's what half the Kraken is designed to be. Well, I didn't play a Kraken, I played the RD1. Uh. The 5150 <laughs> does a little bit of what my RD1 did if I really cranked the gain and, and massively overcranked the amp. Um, but it's really tight uh, and I love that. So the 5150 was, I've never really played through one properly, believe it or not. I actually haven't really played through a 5150. Mm. And, I, and I'm like, what? I've been missing that all that time? That's mad. Yeah. And if that was the Plexi, then it's phenomenal. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, look, D, D robe, ooh, uh, uh, D blindfold, um, and let's talk about what you went through here. Oh, wow. So, um, <laughs> <Why over here>? <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, at least for your final choice, uh, oh. because what you thought was a plexi. Oh, it me. was. And actually, this is a really interesting. So oh. um, all three of the Marshall amplifiers that we've used in this shootout here are from Marshall's studio series. They're still which, that, which, that aren't Yeah, they? so they take the essence of, of the original Big Brother and put it into like a 30 watt, um, slightly smaller enclosure. And I, I have to say, I, I think these are fantastically usable amps because even, you know, you really... You, you get the flavour of these amplifiers when everything is pushed. So if, yeah. you, if you have a plexi, a 100 watt plexi, and you can't get the volume past two, you're sort of, you're missing, you know, half the joy. Whereas I think with these, either with a, a, a tiny bit of attenuation or even without the attenuation, just at gigging volume, these are, these are great amps. Anyway, so. So I got one right. I, the I, first can amp, I tell you, wait, wait, can I tell you what I think I've done? Go on then. I think I've mixed up the Fender and the JTM. Um, well, they'd be two very similar era amplifiers. And I think I may have mixed up the Soldano and the um, 5150. But I think those, those two are interchangeable. Well, uh, we'll talk about it. So, number one, you went, if that's not a JCM 800, then I'm a blind, overweight, middle-aged guy. <laughs> uh, and it was a JCM yes! 800. That was one of my favourites, again. It sounded great, didn't it? JCM 800 just needs to be cranked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think... Actually, almost of all the amps that we've got here, it's the it's the one that just you know what it's like. Do it's it. like a Labrador on a ball, and it, and it wants that ball. It wants ball the is ball. the volume. <laughs> Second, you went. It's brittle chime. It's a Vox, and it was indeed our trusty AC30 over here, ah. um, which <laughs> I thought had a fabulous rock sound with a slightly. Um, the, the, I can see why players like Brian May would put a um, top boost or something in. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Top I, boost I went to see Queen at the, uh, in London for New Year's Eve, um, and Brian May was wasn't too far away from me, and it was f-ing phenomenal. Yeah. And he had four of them, and he had two of them plugged in, and then two behind in case they blew because yeah. they blow a lot all the time. Absolutely dimed, yeah. and he taken out part of the. You could see he just removed a bit of the amp. I don't know what it is well, he does. So, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago maybe, Vox did the official Brian May oh. AC30 doodah, and it just has, no, there's no knobs on it. It's just one knob. So, like, as in... His, Knobless. His tech has obviously just gone, yep, everything is either on max or it's set to a certain thing, so we just need volume. Right. That was the only knob that's on it. It was amazing sound. Anyway, congratulations. You got that. And again, obviously that would sound, you know, a traditional AC30 would have Celestia oh. and Alnico Bluebacks. So we yeah. were using that in Important a sort of non traditional Important to tell the viewers, cab. this, when it plugs into this extension cabinet, it kills the cab inside. So I couldn't hear it over there yeah. and therefore I was cheating. Yeah. That again is one of the modern features on the new AC30s. Anyway, right. So two out of two so far, Mr. Rob. Is this where it all goes wrong? Uh, then you said, number three, you went, it's warm and creamy. It could be a JTM. It could be the orange. Do you want to nail your colours to the mast and give it one or the other, or are you going to stay on the fence? <laughs> I, I, mean, I just, whatever I said is what I stay with. I have no idea. You didn't. You said it could be the orange or the JTM. Oh. I mean, in fairness, slightly later on, you said, I think number six is the JTM. So. Well, then in that case, maybe that was the orange. I led him and he took the bait. It was the orange. Congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Rob. So uh, that was the first one. Oh, that's when I, did, I dropped you, doesn't it? Yeah, that was an interesting kind of... I think the OR30 was an interesting transition between very vintage sounding overdrive and very modern sounding overdrive yeah. and it being somewhere in the middle, which was its own kind of voice, kind of cool. Uh, number four... That was the one you went, it needs a lot less gain. So we actually ended up on number four, taking the gain from maximum down to about so 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. put me out of my misery. Was it the Soldano or was it the... Um... You said it can only be the Soldano. I'm sticking with the Soldano were your exact words, which is just as well, because it was the Soldano. Yeah! Tickety tick tick. <laughs> Here's where we disagreed. I thought I was really pleasantly surprised with how number five sounded. Look, number five was the Fender, right? So I'm just going to get that out there. 
and I wasn't expecting the Fender to do the cranked full gain sound. And I actually thought it had a really cool passable gain sound. But you well, that, went, I don't like this tone. Nah. It's too glassy. It's probably the Fender and it hurt my ears. Yeah, I didn't like it. But you love Fender, so that would be but right I up your alley. Normally have, I certainly wouldn't buy a Fender Deluxe to have everything on 10. No. You know? But it sounded all right. It sounded cool. Can you imagine a Fender Deluxe on 10? Well, the Fender Deluxe is only the 20 watt one. Can you imagine something like a Fender Twin on 10? That was 20 watts? Mm, 22 watts, I think, a Deluxe is, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That was insane. Yep. Valves, mate. I tell you, they're curious things. Uh, number six uh, was the one where I made the comment that you 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 were began to play to the amp to get the best out of it. You said it might be the JTM. Uh, you said it's warm, not too glassy and bright. Reminded you of an old Selma combo that you had, and then you said it was the JTM Studio, and it was indeed the JTM, which is this one here, very cool sounding, the well, new, the newest of the Marshall Studio. I've range. never played through that before, yeah. so that was just kind of really, I mean, deduction and guessing to be honest. Okay, with you. two more amps to go, and number seven was the one that just literally ripped a new arsehole so in the time was, space was continuum. The yes, absolutely. That and was how the many watts was that head? That's the fifty watt ones. It's not the big 100 watt one it's the 50 watts in fact i can't oh, remember yeah. now what the don't they do different tubes in these this is the 50 watt i can't L6. see we'll have to put it on the screen it was six l six. Six. okay so it's the traditional yeah like it and then of course that meant that the last one had to be the marshall plexi which it in fact was the marshall plexi you said so it sounds very 100 percent out of 100 percent yeah it's just relentless. it is relentless how is it possible then <laughs> I mean, I don't it's know. All <laughs> it's all rigged, people. It's, it's, it's so rigged, not people. rigged, but it feels rigged. Yeah, it feels but it rigged. isn't rigged. Uh, they, listen, the guys in the room know it's not rigged because it, what did you do to my face when I was playing? He tried to punch me in the face while I was playing just to see if I could see anything. And I didn't know anything until later on I heard him go, Do you see what I did to his face? Um, <laughs> I can't see anything without these glasses, and I, I definitely can't see anything without glasses. No, and it's, mask it's, on. Uh, I look. it's a solid mask. Look, uh, solid. Quick question, 5150, is that, the, is that the highest wattage of all of these amps here then? Uh, yes, of the amps we've got here, yeah. I mean... Um, well, that makes sense, it was quite a lot louder. It was a little bit louder, wasn't it? I mean, I did... <sighs> we're going to have to start challenging the captain. I think now we're going to have to do yeah. it was amps very, and guitars. That was a very cool challenge, and I enjoyed I don't think I've ever done a comparison quite like that to sort of oh. see how they're... You know, there's certain parts of me go, you can see where... Marshall DNA flows through all Marshalls, but where they have their own, you know, each era has its own vibe. And before you ask out there, no, I'm not going to profile any of these and put them on the cloud for you to download into your device because the, it won't sound like this. You have to do this to get it to sound like this. Yeah. Uh, so there we are. Sorry, um, too bad. Uh, 5150 was the big surprise to me. Uh, and I really like that. I have played this before yeah. in Malta and the so that 800 is a 20... What's the, all the studio stuff is 20, 20, 20 or 30 watts, something like that. That's cool, yeah. isn't it? Are they 20? Yeah. Wow. 20. That was really fun. Thank you for having me and blinding me. What can I say? Anyway, yeah, I enjoyed that. Hope you find that useful. Uh, the Chappers Oral Masterclass rolls on. <laughs> we'll get him next time, everybody, I promise you. See you later. Bye! <laughs>